Hello, everyone, and welcome to the LinkedIn series in the pipeline. My name is Brian Ditton. I'm the CEO of appraisal technology company, Regora. This series is focused on highlighting thought leadership all throughout mortgage and technology. Today, we have a veteran loan officer with experience in originations from JP Morgan, Bank of America, amongst others. He's now Calc Inc.'s executive director of lender strategy and still a current loan officer. Jim Black, thank you for uh, for joining us today. Thanks, Brian, for having me on. It's always an honor to be on a call with or a Zoom with you. So thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, for folks who don't know, maybe, you know, if you could just give your background. So like you said, you know, you, you are a loan officer, but you also, you know, are involved in the strategic side of things as well. How would you describe, you know, what your day to day is and, and what you do? Yeah, so I've been lucky to have been doing loans for about 21 years now. Uh, I really have a passion for being at the consumer level to help families make great decisions about finance. Uh, with that comes um, uh, the growth of my career. I've started to invest in other things and, and create companies. So I have a really unique set of skills that are um, used on a daily basis in the trenches, but also um, from a business perspective of strategy. So I'm very excited to be part of the, the companies I'm um, involved with today and uh, helping other companies build out innovation for the future. So really, it's just about making sure that you're offering the best services to a, to a client and customer and focusing on their needs, not the bank's needs. If you can focus on the client's needs, you're going to be successful in that venture ahead. So. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I think, you know, to your point of getting both in the weeds and high level, it keeps you sharp. You know, how you, you're, you're staying true to the source, so they say. Um, so I think that's awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's challenging to do that, to be able to be zooming in and zooming out on a day-to-day -day basis, but uh, it's never a dull moment, as you know. So Yeah. So as, you know, that kind of player coach and you seeing some cycles in your in your past, given the experience that you have, what would your advice be for, you know, the loan officers of today in this wild market that we're seeing in, in 2023? Absolutely. So I've been lucky to ride three waves. Uh, good and bad waves, and I would consider COVID one of those waves. The, the key, I, I like to re relate what I do like sports analogies. You're only as good as your weakest link on your team. That could be a staff member. That could be a vendor partner. That could be your own set of skill sets. So right now, um, what I would say is the people that are passionate about this industry for the reasons of wanting to help families and want to help people, are going to continue to to excel. If you're looking at trying to get the largest paycheck or cut corners, not going to be a really a good environment for you. So when I talk to new loan officers, um, I just hired actually ironically an ex NFL Super Bowl champion to join our team. Very excited about that. Uh, people look for trust and authentic authenticity, and also a, a vision and a plan and. I'm lucky to surround myself around people that are better than myself. And that makes me the weakest link, which always encourages me to, to be better. So a new loan officer in our industry, some of the key mindsets that they want to have is make sure that they have a complementary skill and, and knowledge and passion and desire to learn about homes, financing, real estate, uh, economics. If they do, they're going to be a lot more successful than someone that may be transitioning from being a software engineer or some other, um, you know, other industry. Also, when you start out, it's okay to be humble and go work for someone that's uh, has a team or has been in the industry for a while. I started this coming out of Wall Street. I was a trader on a New York Wall Street firm named mentioned earlier. I got recruited to work for one of the largest banks in the country and become a sales manager my first day there, which was very strange in mortgage, right? Wall Street trader. So now <laughs> being in charge of sales for a mortgage company, I was honored to have a mentor that put me in every conversation he was part of. I sat in his office for three weeks straight and I was a sponge. I just said that I will sit in a very cramped desk with no space for my knees. I'll have my laptop on my knees and I'll be just listening and taking notes. And um, a good mentor will give you the time and straight advice and perspective that you need to hear 
because some people may not know what they love about being a loan officer yet. And there are so many directions you can go, so many products, so many different marketplaces you can um, focus on. And, and if you get, if you don't get that broad um, grasp from a, from a veteran, it's hard to know it's out there. Uh, big companies want to compartmentalize tasks because they don't want you to get a bigger idea that maybe there's a better uh, opportunity for you outside of that um, process flow. And that's what I love about what I do is we always try to create a, a custom approach because that's what clients need. If I can't be creative or custom, I'm not doing my job to the best of my ability. So partnering with someone also that's probably got a very good reputation in the local market you're looking to start in is, is key. And as a new loan officer, if you're in the marketplace, you've been in for a long time, that's also a very big benefit for you. If you're third generation in the town that you're currently living in, or you went to a big college and you have a big sphere of alumni that you can um, reach out to, you have to really identify all the opportunities that are in your specific sphere um, and leverage that. I was lucky again, going from being a trader on Wall Street and having hundreds of, of, of brokers or financial planners to leverage to be successful. They all knew me and trusted me in a, in a complimentary type of environment. So it made it easy for them to send me um, relationships or um, potential people I could help. So that was a compliment to what I already did. I love hiring people that are of the athletic mindset or that are disciplined like military people or veterans or people that have led in some type of community um, outreach program. Maybe it's their church or maybe it's a nonprofit or they're a high school basketball coach. Those people have such, a, uh, such an advantage. And again, they don't have to be those people but if they can align themselves with, with other professionals that have gone through that years of experience and knowledge and they can adapt to that, it's really a key part. So that's that's what I would say. I mean, amazing uh, droplets there in, in a bunch of different areas. I mean, I, I love the comment around just having curiosity and passion and just being a sponge. I mean, as someone who's been in the industry six, seven years, but I think at this point, accumulated my PhD in appraisal, you know, it's exactly that. Like you, you have to be humble and go talk to a bunch of people who know a lot more than you and just absorb as much as possible. So I think, you know, spot on in terms of the, the loan officer mindset and, you know, that the humbleness that you talk about, you see athletes specifically who are used to just, you know, putting it out there every day and trying their best makes a lot of sense why they, they could be so successful. Um, so that, that thing that, that makes a ton of sense and is awesome. Uh, something in the beginning you mentioned is like the weak link part. And so, you know, leveling yourself up as an individual is, is a start, but the mortgage has so many complementary pieces. You know, you mentioned a bunch of um, appraisal always gets hate for being like the long pole in the tent, but it, I mean, it makes sense, you know, in terms of your weak link metaphor, the appraisal takes three weeks. You can't close faster than three weeks. Um, another kind of area that folks, maybe not from like the individual loan officer level, but more if you thinking at the lender level that folks have been really focused on in the last, you know, year, two, three years is borrower experience. On, the, on you know, the other webinar that we talked, that we were talking on, you mentioned appraiser professionalism as like an input into that. There's a bunch of other variables that go into borrower experience. How important is that in this environment? Is Is it more important in a purchase environment or is it some of those relationship oriented things that you talked about where it's like the sphere of influence and, or, or do they play together in some way? Kind of, how, how do you kind of view the, the importance of that in this environment? They play, they play together. They all, they play together. They have to, if you have an Nordstrom's experience with one element and then it's um, whatever, I don't want to name another name, but let's say it was a thrifty experience in another regard. It's in a conflict status. Is Jim this or Jim this? Is the team that's representing me Am I getting the highest level of service? Am I getting the top caliber people in the industry? That's always a challenge for me to decipher. And um, having just got back from the Mortgage Bankers Association yesterday, which is the annual event where we hear things of industry leaders and thought professionals and influencers, 
evaluating efficiencies, there's only a few things we can control right now in a market that's shifting. Um, you try to be more efficient with your uh, production and performance, cost efficiencies, and then making sure that you have the best partner partnerships for that relationship and reputational value. So I'm always trying to partner with those companies that can give me key metrics and data to help really keep me ahead of changes that are coming. So for example, um, you know, if I can get foresight into something that may be happening nine months from now, I can make the adjustments with my resources or my talent or my skill set to really be there for when the opportunity comes. So it, it becomes a, wow, Jim, you're lucky. That's not being lucky. It's just having hopefully got great insights that you can plan ahead for. Um, and do you have any of those type of things in your world that you like to to leverage or look at from a professional or from an industry perspective? Yeah, I mean, from, from the appraisal standpoint, although it is, although some people view the appraisal as outside of your control, it's really not the case because, you know, we see wide spectrums of lenders who do it really well and, you know, know how to, you know, run best practices and work well with their vendors, pick the right partners, all of that. And then somewhere it's not as successful. So, you know, we just, pu we just published data from our platform that shows like the benchmarks of, you know, national data around turn times, revision rates, fee escalations, things like that. So that people, you know, like yourself can determine where they stand. Is appraisal a weak link for us or, or are we, you know, performing well? So, you know, we, we provide the data that we have and definitely look closely at that to, to see how people are performing. Yeah. And it's, and it's been interesting. Uh, another key takeaway from that event I was just at was very large banks and institutions are now having the time and focus on technology. So we were very busy 2020, 2021, and part of 22, and people were just trying to, you know, plug the holes in the dam, so to speak. It was such a uh, abundance of activity and, and business that there wasn't time to look at um, re retooling technology. And that was a, a theme that I got a lot too, is, um, from a vendor perspective like yourself to uh, the loan officer, this is a very smart time to look at retooling and look at ways to be more efficient. Uh, if I can pick up an extra few hundred dollars of savings for a client and offer that to them in a better uh, overall strategy that saves them more money for the long run, then that's a win for me. So I need to spend that time to do that. So um, I'm sure people that are looking at ways to really get more efficient in the appraisal process also as um, as things are changing. Yep. Awesome. Well, tons of good insights. I think any new loan officers or even the vets, you know, had some things to learn, you know, from you here today. So appreciate you joining us. And I think people are going to get a lot out of this one. Thanks, Brian. And uh, yeah, just take it day by day. And if you love what you do, um, you know, these markets are challenging, but we help people. And that's the key is that all of us in this industry, whatever job you are, whatever part of the segment of the industry you are, is that we're all here to do one thing, which is help families create wealth through home ownership. And so uh, I'm proud to, to know you and your company and uh, excited to see how the rest of the year works out and just take it day by day. So. Sounds good. Well, appreciate you stopping by. Thanks, Brian. Take care. Thank you.